that source consciousness can't fit. There's no way that our, the enormity of us could fit into the human suit. It is a sliver of who you are and what you are and what you come from. And the minute I heard that, it just covered me in chills. I'm like, that's it, that's the thing. Like, I, I think I, I recognize that, that no matter how you wanna label it, no matter what religious package you wanna put it in, you are above and beyond source consciousness, God love, and it is a sliver that exists in you. So every time you tap into that, you're just, it's infinite. Like you're getting the download, you're getting the, the refill yeah. of source. And I, I, I love that idea. So my spiritual journey is just learning more and more about that and being able to embody it. Hey, Thrivers, welcome back to season three of Thrive with Sharon podcast, and we are continuing to roll along and things are just going so swimmingly. I am enjoying this so much. It's so much fun to switch it up and, and to have these conversations with people who are doing incredible things in the world. And today I have someone else who actually Jamie McFadden introduced me to, which is, she's another like near and dear, like soul sister. And um, it's no surprise that I'm already feeling so connected to Nicole Shaka. I love the way that you pronounce your name and you like in your Instagram, it's like Shaka, you know? <laughs> so forever in my mind, whenever I see you, I'm like, Nicole Shaka, you know? So <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly, that's exactly why I did it. So thank you. It's working. <laughs> so much and i'm so glad that you're here but first let me just introduce this incredible human being um nicole is a professional dancer she's also a mobility specialist she's a yoga teacher a creative a creator of the on-demand fitness platform sweatstillness.com and most important a mother to her precious son Bo. and she graduated from loyola marymount university uh, with a BA in theater arts, and Nicole has been featured on The Doctors TV, E! Online, Yoga Journal, and in the New York Times. And she's also a recent author of this incredible book. I just love it so much. It's like all of the heart bubbles and like just feel goods. And I just, Nicole, thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited. Are you kidding? I have to say this, and I'm sure you're your audience and your people already understand this deeply, but the minute I announced that this book was coming out, you were the first person we had never met to mm -hmm. come into the DMs and say, I'll do whatever you need. I'll support you. I love your mission. I love what you're about. Let me know how I can support you. And I was so blown away by your authenticity right out of the gate, your confidence and what I was sharing. Like it was just, I felt immediate connection to you. So I'm so honored to be here, really. Oh, really? good. Well, I'm so glad. And I, you probably were like, who is this creeper? Like, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, no. If you're a friend of Jamie, you're not a creeper. I get it. Wait, this is how that rolls. <laughs> I, it's, like, it's like Mrs. Magoo, like, oh, and I love you. And it's just, That's right. <laughs> it works. And it, and it just is, it's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So exactly. Yeah. Thank so tell you. me, let's talk a little bit about the book. Cause I, I want to just, I, I, I want to start with that just because that's how we connected. Um, and also because, you know, we connected because we also worked through the same publisher, right? Yeah. Land and Hale yeah. Press. Um, so how did, this is such a heartwarming story. Do you just want to like mm. share a little bit about it and how it came about? Totally. Um, so I have a 10 year old son. He's 10 now. Uh, and, you know, during the COVID times, we, he got into this phase where he, <laughs> God love him. He's like, can you make up a bedtime story? I said, Bo, we have 400 bucks right here, right? We have 400 bucks right here. It's nine o'clock at night. He's like, yeah, but it's like, you just like make it up. And then that, that's what I want. I was like, great, great. So I would every night, this went on for months during the COVID times. And I, I would be like, okay, it may or may not have a moral. It may or may not have a plot. Like I'm just spilling things. And I remember my dad used to do this with me. It was an ongoing joke. It would be about deer and something. And there would literally be no moral. And then he'd kind of pull one out of the woodwork at the end. And we're like, that doesn't really, <laughs> that doesn't track at all, but okay, good night. <laughs> you know. So now, so now I'm having to, you know, go through this with my son, of course. And one night, I just started with the concept, like the bare bones of what yoked is that my, my children's book. And I started talking about an egg and what I had witnessed 
um, with children during that time was very confusing for me between the masking and the isolation and the fear mongering. And I am, I do not come from that. I'm not cut from that kind of cloth. I want to mm. explore and I want to ask questions. And I've always been very curious and dirty. Like I grew up in Alabama in the dirt. My mom was literally <laughs> like, you're filthy, bathe yourself. And then you can go right back out there. <laughs> but, uh, so, so that whole, concept of being extra hygienic and mindful of that was not only foreign to me, but it was hard to watch with my child because I know that he's a boy and he wants to get out there and live his life. So that was kind of what spearheaded the idea of Sonny, this egg who had an intuitive feeling, had a gut feeling about the way he was and the way he wanted to show up in the world, but was kind of, eh, I don't know, faced with limitations that didn't feel accurate for him. So I, I just kind of, sp <laughs> just came out of nowhere. And at the end of it, now, I mean, again, it wasn't perfect, but at the end of it, my son was like, <laughs> I was like, is that a slow clap, sir? Did I just get a slow clap? Because, and he was like, that's kind of, that's like real good. And I said, yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? So then he went to sleep and I just laid there wide eyed and I'm thinking to myself, that could be a book. I can make that a book. How hard is it to write a children's book? Oh, it can't be that hard. To... And then I, of course, found out it is quite challenging to write a children's book, but mm. that's, that was how it all began. I just, he gave me the opportunity and it, wow. it was downloaded somehow and then came to fruition. It only took three years, but. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that speaks to the writing process for sure. I, I, oh, I that. Mm hmm I have to say, well, to be honest, the right, the actual manuscript came out pretty quickly. It was the hurdles of illustrations and um, a publisher that I didn't end up working with that where I learned a lot of lessons about the publishing Ooh. industry um, the hard way. Uh, but then Samantha, our mutual publisher came in and just really sh sh shared the light really was like, this doesn't have to be that difficult here. Let me help you. And then it, then it was a snowball. It was easy at that point, but mm -hmm. the first two years were rough. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I can really relate to what you're talking about. I didn't have that experience with publishing and not that we need to go too far down this dirt road, but I just want to like, like give Samantha her flowers because I, I do, mm. I've never been through that process. And while it's not easy because I was like literally, you know, doing the entire book process with her. Um, and there are lots of hurdles and lots of things that I had no idea what you needed to have and do and whatever. And it was stressful at times, but I never got to the point where we were like doing a character assassination on one another because like, <laughs> right. Because we do, yeah. right. Like when it's just oh, like, oh, yes. not doing what you're supposed to do and this isn't supposed to be done. And I just, I just would always say like, I'm not happy about it or I'm a little stressed about it or whatever, but like. I believe in this process. I believe in this book. I believe that it's already out there. I believe that it's like, so this is just a bump in the road in the process, right? Yes. And yes. Um, so, so I, and I also knew that there were all of these other potential, like terrible, like really not like nice, really ill-intended situations yeah. that are out there and I was like all right well this is just part of the process but like it could be a lot worse and I hate canceling out your experience by saying it could be worse you know but um but I I, I just had such an appreciation for the fact that like this is a big it's a big push huge it's a huge commitment on your end it's a huge um act of trust yeah. Not only are you putting all that out into the world, but you want to know that the person who's guiding you and holding your hand is equally invested. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's quite an experience. And I know you must know too, now that yours is out there, it's so surreal when people comment on it or they like, oh, when you reference such and such and you're thinking, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very uh, surreal. It, it, it really is. Like I'm, ha I'm having people quote me. Oh and yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was getting my master's degree and my, you know, so that I could become a licensed holistic psychotherapist. And, um, the very first time that somebody like quoted me in the discussion board. Right. And I was like, Oh, I am being cited right now. I am being cited. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. It's even better. I think this yeah. is incredible. Right. It's not even like in the little, you know, small self-contained village of a, of a master's program. This is like the world. So I, I, getting back to you, like, I just think I love this book 
for so many different reasons. I love how it came about, how this love between you and your son and mm -hmm. just that synergy that occurs and that magic occurs. There's so much magic in being a parent, isn't there? Yeah, it's, uh, that kind of takes my breath away because for all the hardship and for, you know, the unknowns, the, the fact that you get through the toddler years and then you're dealt with the adolescent years and then you're moving into preteen and it's just consistent. It's a consistent mirror for you. But at the same time within that, there is a magic that is so hard to put language around and you wouldn't trade it for anything, like all the hardship. I'm um, divorced, his his father and I co-parent, that's in <laughs> air quotes. Uh, this is a special setup, but it's mm -hmm. it teaches me how to be completely emotional, emotionally available for my son in ways that I could have written off. Not that I would have, but it requires me to step up over and over again. And yeah. there is magic in that, you know, oh it's, I wouldn't want to avoid it there. The benefit, I can already see the benefit in him, just the way he behaves in the world. So it's, it's definitely landing. That's amazing. Is good. It's so yeah. amazing. And I, I know for me, when I, I have two daughters and when I had them, I, there's like this crossing over, you know, of becoming like being a woman and then becoming a mother. Yes. And it, that also is very magical and it's a miracle. A miracle. Um, <laughs> it's a miracle. It is. Everything had to go right. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Blows me away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so from that little heart point or big heart point that you had, you, you, your son planted the seed you were like, okay, let's rock. I'm going to do this. And I think so many parents probably have been put in that situation, right? Where it's just like, oh, tell yeah. the story. And you're just like, I, well, how about, you know, uh, the little engine that could one more time, you know, or yeah. <laughs> Skippy John Jones yeah. one more time. You know? <laughs> and they're like, no, I want you. I want your mm. story. I want your imagination. It's like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so the fact that you, you had that belief in yourself is incredible. And you followed your intuition. It's great. And it's doing so well. I, I am shook to be honest. I, uh, yeah, we hit bestseller in like five hours. I don't know how that, <laughs> I will say I was very proactive in nagging everyone, but I, um, was really touched by that. And I think there's a review somewhere on Amazon where this person said, I have to be honest, I didn't see the end coming. I feel ridiculous. And I, I, I don't want to spoil the ending, but it's it's pretty, if you look back at it, you're like, oh, I see where we're going here. But um, that gave me a little tickle, you know, because it's just hearing people's interpretation, let alone, like you said, hearing people speak your words or when people show me video footage of their children reading it aloud, I think, oh, oh my God, I never <laughs> heard it that way, you know? And it's like, it's like re-experiencing your own work, but better. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes. It's magic. It, it really yeah. is. I think that's so wonderful. And I'm so happy and, and just want you to continue to achieve such great success in this, you. you know, celebrating of your book and promoting of your book. And I can't wait to see where all of that's going to take you, Thank which kind of leads us into the next juicy part of our conversation, oh. which you and I were like, Oh, um, intuition. I love the fact that you are like, really heavy and deep into this. And I love how you weave it and I can't even articulate it just, but in, in my looking at your work and, and how you show up and serve, um, to work with people who are in aging and working with mobility and like, just, it's incredible. The work that you've done, the movement and the, the actual mobility that you've helped people to achieve. It's like, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're already setting up a session, um, after this call, but like, for sure. I know that part of what got you there had to have been your intuition. I want you to speak into that. Absolutely. Um, I, from a young age was a dancer, very active. I started dancing at two. And of course I did other things like swimming and tennis. And I, I tried some sports, but we'll just say <laughs> I preferred the pink tights over the running. So that's how that worked. Uh, 
needless to say, I was always embodied through movement. So there was a level of cathartic expression from a young age that I was tuned into. You know, it was not only did it feel like the gift that one of the gifts that God gave me and it, it had to be shared, but also it was an exploration of who I was in the world. So the, the better I got at dancing, the better and more confident I could show up as myself in life. And mm. that's how doors were opening for me at a very young age where I could, I, and I had mentors too, that were already there, you know, 10, 15 years older than me, but pulling that out of me versus shutting it down. You know, they were like mm -hmm. more of that, more of that. Um, I keep getting chills in our session. I think that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the intuitive aspect of myself has been loud and proud from day one. And I'm thankful for that. I had parents that nurtured it. Uh, my, obviously my dance, um, my dance teachers and whatnot nurtured it. Yeah. However, <laughs> all of that got a little bit more muffled by the time I was in my early twenties, I moved out here to dance, Los Angeles to dance and be in the industry of, you know, entertainment. And, um, although I had a great group of friends, I think being in that chapter of my life and then also being in an industry where you are, where you are defined by your appearance mm -hmm. started to, started to really layer in all sorts of, um, disruption for me. Mm. I, I didn't want to listen to my intuition any longer. I wanted that career. So I figured if I wanted that career, I need to start following exactly what that person's doing aesthetically, professionally, wh whatever it was. And then yeah. that, that became a, a time where my, tu my intuition wasn't the trusted guide that it, it had always been. It was getting the backseat. Um, turns out I had a nice career, got super injured, uh, which I literally lost my identity. I, I ruptured three discs in my spine and then a week later, or mm -hmm. herniated three and then ruptured four a week later uh, and then was on bed rest for a month. And my entire career as I had known it took a big, a big pivot. There was a, wow. the entire trajectory shifted. So at that point I was like, okay, we need to figure out what's going on here. And that's where all the mobility curiosity really came into play because I had taken it for granted, you know, I was flexible, I was strong, I was powerful, I was in my body. And then having that snatched away via injury mm. um, was life altering, really. Um, I mean, life altering is a serious, you know, description, but I, I can imagine that it was it like how it altered your life is indescribable, right? Like to to have this be your identity, to we thrive in community. Mm -hmm. And so being part of that community, uh, like I, I was joking before I was like, I'm in the club, right? Like to, to have that feeling of like being in the club, right? Like I'm in the, the performance club, I'm in this, the, you know, and then like having that switch and to see not everybody is going to respond the same way, but to see how some people will respond to you. It's like, well, oh, okay, well, you're not going to be here. Or you're not going to be in this gig or, you know, and, and they continue to move forward and, and, and you're, having to pause for a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, as I lay in that bed and I was in, I had this guy roommate who I didn't even like, and he was not helpful whatsoever. Like I'm talking, I had to crawl to the bathroom. I oh. lived on, are you ready for this? Um, I lived on aloe vera juice and uh, mixed nuts <laughs> <laughs> because that's so gross. But I was like, I, I was so caught up. I was like, I can't feed myself. I'm not going to ask that guy for help. Like I have no family here. It was just this, it was such a weird, dark time. And there was a shift happening because one of the healers who I was working with during that injury, um, her name's Dr. Ruth Ziemba, and she was a network spinal analysis. So it was mm. a, a lot about gateway energy and yep. she would come to my house and she would place hands on me and shift things. And, um, my father is a, a physician, a uh, head and neck surgeon for, or he's retired now, but he was like, so what, what's happening? And I was like, well, Dr. Ruth is coming and she's going to do this energy work. And he's like, my dad, God love him. And I, he's my hero. He's like, that's awesome. He's like, let me know how it goes. Wow. He's, oh yeah. He's Eastern Western. And he, oh. before, 
I love that. Oh yeah. He's just, he's a gem of a person. And so I was like, okay, dad, I'll let you know what happened. And soon enough with, of course, physical therapy and her work, things started to shift, but it wasn't just the physical. It was the spiritual. It was all parts of me because then she introduced me to a hypnotherapist who helped me kind of understand what I was going through. I just never been that still for that long having to be in bed <laughs> to sit with this new version of me to heal from a physical injury and then to look at the all the all the energy that was just not able to leave my body express <laughs> yeah correct yeah exactly yeah. so it was just a really powerful time wow yeah. wow wow mm-hmm. wow to sit with yourself i i can identify with the physical expression um that's definitely how how i roll too although i yeah. there's other expression in general of something that's like that inner voice. But I I think that for me, and I don't know if this was your experience, but like for me and many people who have had like pre-verbal traumatic experiences or whatever, like finding words sometimes aren't so easy. And so to then find another way to express. So like through physical movement, dance, working out, lifting weights, running, yes, you know, yoga, all, all of the things, right. Even, even writing, right. Some, sometimes when you write, it's easier oh, yeah. to put the thoughts out than to speak the word. Um, so your main motive and, and with ease was physical expression. And so that must've been really hard for you. Um, yeah. and like to, to, to have to greet other parts of yourself, I'm sure we're also not so easy. Yeah. No certainly wasn't but you have such a wonderful like um I don't know I'm sure people say this to you all the time but you have this wonderful like energy about you and you do seem like just someone who has like this bubbling effervescence about you know like you're just like you're just um that must have also been part of the picture too then right or no oh yeah I was throughout the whole thing I was just certain that I was going to come out I was like I remember thinking, and I've had this same thought in different chapters of my life, but I was like, what's the lesson? Just give me the lesson so I can get (laughs) on with it. Like, just tell me what the lesson is with this. Of course, it took years for me to figure out what that lesson was because when I was able to move the orthopedic at the time who mistakenly, and I, I mean, I forgive him obviously, but I've, I've had this discussion with many people. He was like, you have the spine of a 55 year old man. I was 23 at the time. And I'll never forget. And he's like, and this will happen again. And those were his words. And I looked at him and I was like, mm-hmm. and I left. And I remember I called my dad. I'm like, he just told me I have the spine of a 55 year old man. It's going to happen again. And my dad's like, wow. And I, I remember thinking to myself, why would you ever as okay. someone in a place of power and position to say something like that, which still lands. I mean, I'm 44. It's still, right. I still, I'm like, oh, well, could happen again. Dr. So-and-so said, so. you know, right. it's, huh. Always in the back of your mind. Oof. Yeah. That yeah. is not cool. No, but but then I he suggested I go try yoga. And that was really where my eyes were open to a yoga practice and mm. having to truly be in my body, but slowing my business down <laughs> so that I could <laughs> actually be with myself in my body versus thrashing it around and you know, jazz costumes. <laughs> So that was very, that was very powerful and a whole new chapter, you know, was born from there. So that was good too. Yeah. 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 And so, and you're still continuing to serve in that way, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I love yoga. I, I think everyone can benefit from the practice of stillness. Now I approached yoga like it was dance. So I went right into Ashtanga. I was there five days a week. I was sweating my mind, my brains out. I was like, okay, is it, can I, am I good enough to get my leg around my head? It was a whole, it was a whole unlearning through that. But getting injured in my yoga practice, I realized I had everything backward. I, I s- sought out my um, mobility specialist mentor and he really reframed it for me. And at that point I said, I know how I can help people. It's not going to be a a crazy yoga practice. It's not going to be, you know, in film and television. I was like, I want people to feel good in their bodies all the time. 
Mm. So that's where I've landed now. And I, I just seek to help people do that because you're going to have these chapters. You're going to have a, a wonderful, healthy chapter, and then you're going to have a crazy injury or whatnot. It's, it's about how do you navigate the, the through line of that so you can age well. And I even use that in quotations because I don't, I don't imagine age as a number. I imagine it as an experience. So you can experience life well. Mm. Mm. Go deeper into that because I know there's more there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't view us in chronological numbers. So when I look at a person, like you, you shared your age with me and I'm like, ah, right. <laughs> like, cool. I, I have had older friends my entire life and I have always been drawn to the wisdom that they bring. Mm. Um, I know in my body, the physical challenges have had me face, have had me face, um, entropy or aging in a way that is more graceful where I can have some mm. grace for myself and not be like, okay, we're not gonna, we're not breaking down. We're going to keep a hundred percent muscle mass. We're going to keep all our flexibility until we're 75 years old. And then instead <laughs> I feel as though I just want the spirit of my most healthy self to exist. So when my joints are operating as optimally as they can, my spirit feels alive and seen and has a, as has a safe home, you know? So that's what I try to help people create in their bodies, a safe home where the joints are like, okay, we got you. We're not your enemy. In fact, we love you. We love being here. Go shine your light. You know? So I'm like beaming right now. <laughs> oh, Sharon. <laughs> You're so, you're so fabulous. <laughs> Look at you with your big smile. I love it. Well, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm like, Nicole, Shaka. I just, <laughs> I have to say that every time. But like, I, we need you. We need the spirit and the essence of you exactly where you are. I'm just, but I'm beaming because you're really, you've gotten to the essence. You've, you've found the essence of what, is to me, my opinion, this is my knowingness inside is that, right? And when we, dance is a great metaphor for it. There are so many things in any kind of high performance, you know, any kind of athletics, especially uh, really many high performing things, but we'll just choose that physical aspect. We abandon ourselves a lot. Oh, Right. And you alluded to it earlier in your conversation where it's just like, okay, I'm not going to listen to my intuition. I'm going to do exactly what they do to get to where they are, which I can only imagine to fill in the blanks what those things were. Yeah. And you know, you don't have to necessarily share, but I know what happens. And, you know, we we over and over and over again. And there's an energetic connection to that. It's not yeah. just, well, you'll be okay because you'll be happy when we get to X destination. Right. Right. It, it doesn't, it doesn't compute that way. That's not the universe, the way that the universe works. That's not the universal law of exchange. That's, that is literally the opposite. And so um, I have the saying, we can only go as fast as our slowest moving part. Right. And that doesn't mean oh, like, come on, Bessie, hurry up. You know, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, no, like, oh, you're here. Fine. I'll sit with you and I'm going to help you. And I'm going to love you yeah. and I'm honor you and yeah. we're all going to be happy. So, so to, to honor the, of wherever it is that you are. And I love the fact that like, God, your clients are so lucky that like, they have you breathing this into them because many people, when it comes to dealing with a lack of mobility or a lack of whatever it is, right. Cause I'm sure the people who come to you aren't coming to you because like, look at what I can do. Boop, 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 boop. You know, it's just correct. <laughs> they're like, okay, would like to be able to tie my shoes. Um, I would yep. like to be able to get up out of bed in the morning and not have to shuffle to the bathroom before I get stand up straight, you know, whatever it is. And for you in those moments, it, it, I, I do the same thing. And I always say, um, people are just like, well, how are you going to do this? And how are you going to do that? And how are we going to heal this? And how you, and I said, all I know is the how, is that anywhere we go, we're going to greet every aspect of you and whatever else shows up with love. Yeah. 
because that may be the first time that love has ever actually been in that space. Mm. Right. Yeah. So for you, it's like, that's what I'm seeing as you're sharing how Mm. you go about doing what you're doing, because it's like, you're basically saying, we're going to put love everywhere. So your joints are going to feel happy. The energy is going to be happy. The spirit of who you are is whole and wholeness is really love. Right. Oh, yes. Wrap it up in a bow, Sharon. Everything you just said. (laughs) Everything you just said. Exactly it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And you just Uh, found your way there through intuition. True. I, I, I do. You made me think of something here. Um, when I was in, on, in that bed, in, uh, on bed rest, I do recall thinking, this is it. I have to find a whole new version of me. Like what's going to light me up the way dance did? Nothing can match that. Mm-hmm. Nothing will ever like this. I had the good chapter of my life. Now it's downhill from here. Again, remember I was like 23. Yeah. I was like it's downhill from here. Like what could ever step in to the sh- dance shoes and fill me up that way? But learning about the human body and then being able to to see people transform is above and beyond. I mean, oh. dance dance is great, but seeing people thrive is like, what? It is, there's nothing like it. No, I agree. I agree. I, I always say like, I get to do this. Like every day I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. I get to do this? Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes it could be heavy. I'm sure for you, it must oh. also be hard, you know, because yeah. when you're working with, with the physical body, the emotions are connected. And when you're especially joints and fascia, right. So that's, that's the, the, the central clearing house for all storage and emotions. Right. Yeah. So there must be a lot of emotional parts and points and release. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have, um, a student client, she was just, she's an exceptional seeker of a person. You know, she's mm-hmm. not the type, she's just a seeker and always, and she's so inspiring to me. And when she started coming to my, the, my classes are called Ken Stretch. That is the joint specific training that I do in the group format. It, the, the title of it is Ken Stretch. So it's a licensed sort of practice. Um, when she started coming to these classes, I, I mean, I'm telling you, she, she was in a terrible car accident, broke all kinds of bones in her body. That's my dog, Moose. <laughs> um, and she was immobilized in a way that she wasn't familiar with because she was an athlete as well. And when she started taking these classes religiously, she would stay after a moment when I would close the class down and she'd be like, I am in tears. She's like, my shoulder hasn't moved like that in 15 years. She's like, I'm going to take a minute and then I'm going to follow up with you. She's like, because I just want to make sure that's okay. And I'm like, I'll just say her name is Sally. I'm like, Sally, I was like, that's freaking awesome. I was like, take all the time you need. Could text me, call me, let me know how it lands, you know, but she was my biggest fan. And I, it was so um, powerful to see someone who had experienced that kind of frustration and immobility to come around and to embody it. Cause it was happening in real time. Like she was there every Sunday, still is, still shows up every Sunday and is just, She's like, that was the best class ever. I was like, <laughs> she, I was like, you said that last time. She's like, every class is the best class ever. And I was like, God bless you. I love but Sally. She, she, I know. <laughs> she gets, she gets it. And she, yeah. and she sees that she can hold grace for her healing journey. Oh, healing journey. Oh my God. <laughs> but you know, she, she holds it for herself and it's happening. So that's like thrilling to watch. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And, and, and you're part of it. You're the guide. You're the Sherpa. Mm. Well, yes. In leggings. I'm a Sherpa in uh, <laughs> leggings. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so that I, I'm just curious now about like, I, I think that we all have to maintain it, it's moving and it's beautiful and, and it's it's wonderful and I know you're grateful and it also can sometimes be like a, it can feel heavy the responsibility yeah. right so oh, yeah what is your practice to help to keep yourself the just beautiful bubbly wonderful growing expanding expression of you hmm. that's a great question 
I, um, have a pretty significant meditation practice. So I wake up around five 20 every day and I come downstairs and it's quiet and dark and I get my 10 minutes of sometimes it's guided. Sometimes it's, um, it's just silent. I, I'm pretty religious about my routine. So I, I come downstairs, I take that 10 minutes. Um, I have my water, I have my coffee. I get early morning sunlight for 10 minutes and then I, I start programming for the day. So that sets me up. That is, uh, I think the real secret because when I have those, when I have that morning routine in place, then I feel clear headed. I feel I'm completely guided as I need to be. I'm in my right place and I'm taking my next right step. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, it, it kind of, it changes, right? So sometimes I have a really hard workout in the book. Sometimes I'm just going on a neighborhood walk. Um, sometimes it's girl time. I have a really great group of friends and they fill me up. I mean, I will leave our little gatherings and it's the equivalent of a heavy day of lifting for me. Yeah. Like, great. Dorfin. That was, that was like, that was emotional deadlifts in the best way, you know? Oh, I love <laughs> I mean, that emotional deadlifts. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, you know? So I, I just have, I have a lot of different ways that I tap into it. So I, I'm filled up in, in different um, facets, facets of life, I guess. Yeah. That's so wonderful. I think that having a practice is so important. And I, and I, I'm going to be more intentional now having written the book, I realized that like, I probably could have been more clear about like a specific daily practice, but I almost intend, I, I like had this push pull about it, but I think what I'd love to do is to have everybody incorporate like what their daily practice is so that people can like pick from it and say, okay, that resonates. That doesn't, I want to choose yeah. to do that. But the whole premise behind it is that a, it's a practice. So it's a practice of being prepared to receive. Yeah. Right. And then also yeah. to move through those pivots and dips in life. Yeah. But it's also when you master your morning, especially that's mastering like the subconscious, the subconscious programming. And so people mm -hmm. who are having a harder time moving through things, it's usually that subconscious. That's the one that's like that critic that comes through. It's just right. like, uh -huh. you know, you suck. You can't do anything. You're probably going to hurt all day. You know, whatever it is. <laughs> right? yeah. but, um, why bother? Just stay in bed, whatever. And so when you can master the morning, you're actually helping to re reprogram your subconscious. Yeah. And yeah. And, um, and you master your morning, you master your day. It really is the truth. Yeah. And it, all it takes is to be in a routine for a minute and then to not have it any longer. And you realize, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't respond to this email. I'm angry at my children. I'm angry at everyone. Everyone's awful. Like, the, you know, it's, it's pretty nuts. It's a snowball. Oh. Yeah. I always say like, oh, I don't even want to be around me if I don't do my morning practice. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, exactly. It's just like, it's so, <laughs> how'd I get out of this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah oh so it, it's so important to just have that, have that routine. And I think that's wonderful that you have such a beautiful one that that 10 minutes of sunlight is huge too, because that helps with so much with your circadian rhythm, but Let's, I, I want to dip now, because that kind of takes us into the aspect of spirituality. And I want to know like what that means for you and to you, right? Like everybody has their own um, understanding and connection to spirit, being spiritual, spirituality. Yeah. What is that for you? Because I know that that's part of what you weave into everything that you do. Yeah. Um, I would say... I'm a, I'm a seeker at heart. So I'm a seeker of all kinds of information, right? I was raised Catholic. I was raised in the church. I was raised with prayer. I was raised um, with Jesus as a, as a brilliant model of behavior and um, the way to exist in the world in a loving embodied way. Um, and then I've, I kind of veered away from, again, I was raised Catholic. So I veered away from Catholicism and found this wonderful church that I attended for a long time. Um, and then we moved away from there. And so now it's kind of, it's it taken all sorts of shapes, but my spirituality is, is truly just, it's all love. We are love. We came from love. We're source energy. We are God consciousness. We are all those things in this human suit. Um, I was 
I'm listening. I say reading, okay? Because I asked a couple of people and if it's audible, if it's on audible, I'm technically still reading it, Correct. even though I'm listening to it. Correct. I okay. agree. So then I'm reading a book in my car <laughs> um, by Dolores Cannon called The Three Waves of Volunteer oh, she's nice. in the New Earth. Yes. The way that she phrased, um, and I don't know if it was a direct quote from her, or one of her clients that she worked with, but that our, that source consciousness can't fit. There's no way that our, mm -hmm. the enormity of us could fit into the human suit. It is a sliver of who you are and what you are and what you come from. And the minute I heard that, it just covered me in chills. I'm like, that's it. That's the thing. Like, I, I think I, I recognize that, that no matter how you want to label it, no matter what religious package you want to put it in, you are above and beyond source consciousness, God love, and it is a sliver that exists in you. So every time you tap into that, you're just, it's infinite. Like you're getting the download, you're getting the, the refill yeah. of source. And I, I, I love that idea. So my spiritual journey is just learning more and more about that and being able to embody it. That's really it for me. Becoming more. Yeah. Because yeah, you're untapped. Like it's, there's no limit. It's crazy. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Literally. Yeah. No cap. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, you know, when we talk about pain, when we talk about physical limitations, when we talk about, you know, um, personal experiences, relational experiences, we do feel like it's like, it's a very finite, there's a cap to it, right? It's just like, yeah. This, this is it. And we start telling ourselves stories. I mean, I, I know I have where, you know, you're just like, well, maybe I'll just, you know, be alone forever, or, you know, because I couldn't make that work or whatever. And it's just like, what? Wait, no, <laughs> we're just getting started. Right. It's yeah. just like, there is right. so much more. What you know is so little to what you don't know about right. self even. Right. Right. So I, I mm. love your your journey and your, your secretness, your secretum. Um, I, I, I like calling, I, I like saying seeker. My, my children are seekers too. Um, I've always been a seeker, but I've been more of a visionary than like, so it's like kind of, I, not that there's one better than the other, but it's just kind of like, just how it all kind of shows up. Um, and, but there is that we can all tap in and awaken that seeker inside of ourselves, right? A hundred percent curiosity yeah. of what, yes what's what else you know what else yeah and mm -hmm. I love that you're really like lockstep with the collective evolution of things as well right because I think all of us probably came from most of us probably came from some sort of like dogmatic connection right whether it's Catholicism or Judaism or whatever and the world now has become, you know, it was very much segmented before, but now it's just like, it's, we're just all connected. We're more global yeah. citizens than we are anything else. And that also mm -hmm. means that we're okay. So if I'm connecting to you and you live in Pakistan, right. Um, and your belief religious is, is different than mine, but like, I love you and you yeah. love me. Right. Yeah. And that means that there's like more, there's more. Correct. Right. So let's be curious about that. And, and so I, I love that you're following that pull and honoring all aspects of everything that you learned and everything that you know to be, and also realizing that it can be that and something else. Yeah. Yeah. So. That and yeah. Nicole, you are such a just wonderful human being and soul. You just really are. I just, Thank you, Sharon. I'm so grateful that you followed your path the way that you did. Thank you. I am too, because I, I have the most incredible connections. You now sure. in my back pocket. Just, <laughs> I just am so thankful for the people in my life. They just never cease to amaze me and inspire me. And I, that's how I know that I'm, I'm on my right path, really. It's the people that I interact with that I get to meet, just like you. So yeah, likewise. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, it's been such an honor and I'm so glad that you came today and had this conversation. We didn't know where it was going to go, but we knew it was going to be good. And so I, you know, I, I just love your personality so much. I've had the opportunity to be on a zoom call with you and like, here you just like off the cuff and I swear to goodness, Nicole is hysterical. Uh, oh. So you're just a, a delight and a light to be around and just, just being in your presence is, is, is healing in and of itself. But I want to encourage everyone. Just, this book is mine, by the way. Uh, if any child is going to get this book, I'm buying them one too. This is my book. It's going in my book. <laughs> my Bless children you. Can read it, right? Um, oh. I hope that everyone gets your book, Yoked. It's just such a wonderful, I love I love the genesis of the story. I love everything about it. And I love how it all turns out. Yeah. And there is a small plug. I should say uh, my little freebie. If you go to yokedbook.com is a dance video where I took my child and his classmates and taught them some dance moves, which they were very handsomely paid in ice cream for. <laughs> so it wasn't, that's how that trade went down. <laughs> There's a lot of ice cream for that one. <laughs> it's worth it. It's super cute. Well, I'm definitely going to check it out and I will make sure that we put the link in the show notes. And oh. how else can people find you? Because I know that people are like, oh my gosh, I need Nicole. Oh. I, I need her to help me. Thank you. Um, my, my website is sweatandstillness.com and it is just full of live classes and recorded content, audio meditations. Um, I'm on TikTok just adding value the best I can with mobility, funny little mobility videos and Instagram, of course. Um, TikTok is the Nicole Shaka and Instagram is just Nicole Shaka. You can okay. find me there. I'm going to yeah. check. And you Substack on too. I've been, I, are you on Substack? I've been writing there and I just love it. I found so many incredible writers on Substack. I've never even heard of Substack. Oh, we'll take this offline, but it is excellent. Oh my goodness. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and a lot I'm of great gonna, writers. Though. I'm definitely going to connect with you on TikTok as well. We're on Instagram together, but um, I TikTok is fun. I love it. It's a fun. It's just fun. It's fun. It is. Um. So, well, thank you for blessing us with your presence today and all of who you are and how you're showing up. It's it's just such a delight, and I'm so excited for everyone to get to know you more in in this conversation through this conversation and. Is there anything that you want to make sure that if I didn't cover that you want to share before we end today? Not that I can think of other than just, just don't, don't suffocate your little voice. Ooh. Your little, it's just a whisper. I have a little letter to the reader in that book that, um, yeah. that really s stood out to me. I wanted to get that message across that it's, it almost always is the whisper that has your best interests at heart. It's not the loud, chattery, noisy, yeah, mental <laughs> stimulant. It's the, it's the, it's the whisper. And I, I just want to remind people when you get that really tune your ears to it. Cause there's a lot of value on that whisper. Yeah. I love that. I absolutely love that. Tune into the whisper. Tune into the whisper. I love it. Well, Nicole, thank you for coming and everyone. Thank, thank you. you for listening today. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. I just have so many heart bubbles flying around. It's like not even funny. <laughs> Literally in my heart. Okay. Um, but I also want to make sure that, you know, check out the links for Nicole's um, dance video and also all the other things in the show notes. But I also want to encourage you if this is the first time that you're finding this podcast and listening in, uh, please join the community. And also the healer's journey book has been released and it is a bestseller too. Yes, it is. And so I'm also going to drop the link for that as well. So I would love for you, if you're listening and you haven't um, found the book yet to please go and try the book out. Um, it's, it's definitely helpful for you to discover the healer within you. And until the next time, everyone, peace and love and be well. Oh.